HS2 to the quarrying sector is going to be a huge, huge drain on materials and aggregates into the UK. Um, it's one of the largest construction projects planned at the moment and for me personally um, there's been a huge amount of um, talk about HS2, the disruption and so on, but actually there's been nothing, what I've heard, or very little, um, to do with the aggregate supply and, and the aggregate side. Um, we know that there's going to be roughly millions of tonnes worth of materials going into the job and I think it's such a high quality material, such a high spec, that we really do need to start planning this now. What I'm talking about really um, is the supply of aggregates. As I said, the rail ballast alone is such a high spec specification material. You, out of every tonne what you crush, you're getting a very small proportion of, of usable material, but it's the other 90% or there or thereabouts. And where does that actually go to? What's the home for it? What's the actual use of it? It's, it's not only the, the, the planning of the actual job itself, it's the planning of the materials coming out of the ground, it's the planning of the, um, the machinery required, it's the planning of the people, um, skilled operatives, um, all of the environmental aspects to do with fuel savings, energy costs and so on. And I believe that one of the key aspects of this is working in partnership with industry suppliers and contractors to actually make, to make this happen and to make it happen efficiently. My last word on HS2 would be, although it's going to be a huge, huge project, think about the aggregates, where the aggregates are going to come from, the impact on the local areas, not just the aggregates, what you actually physically see, think about the aggregates that goes into the concrete railway sleepers, um, the very high spec materials, and actually how it's going to benefit the country as a whole. And I think that's absolutely vitally important.